Hey guys, welcome to the shop and welcome to part one of our ID grinding spindle adapter build for the cutter grinder. Now, this one, the original one, is busted in several spots and I think unsafe to use. So we're gonna attempt to make a new one, at least uh, a test piece first. So I'm gonna bring you over the bench, I'll give you a little better look at this and then we'll get started. And no outside intro this week. It's pouring rain. Alright guys, now here's a closer look at the part we're going to be making. And it is the grinding spindle or grinding adapter for my cutter grinder, the ID grinding uh, adapter. It allows me to hold these small stones and get up into a uh, hole to, you know, to grind up inside, uh, you know, something or an inside feature. And this has several cracks in it. It's got uh, some cracks around the uh, end here. It's got three. I'll get you a good shot of those. And I think that makes this unsafe to use. These have to spin extremely fast, and uh, if it was to finish breaking out, it could potentially kill you. Something like that, thrown at 17,000 RPMs. I mean, you you just you don't want to don't want to have those for breakfast. I'll tell you, you know that. All the features on this thing seem to be ground, even the threads ground in it. And it's hard as glass. You hit it with a file and it just runs right over it. And I think that may have had something to do with this thing breaking out, but it, you know, it could have been crashed or you know, Bubba could have cranked down on this nut. You just never know. So we got a brown and sharp number five taper here. As far as I can tell, my buddy Jim said it was a brown and sharp number five as best as he could tell. And this book is also pointing to that. So I've never dealt with the brown and sharp tapers. So this will be this is my first experience with them, really. So we've got to figure out a way to hold this thing. Keep everything concentric because this needs to be accurate. It's going to be spinning extremely fast. We're going to be making our first, just a test piece, really. Just so I can get familiar with the order operations and, and uh, you know, the grinding on the machine out of a grade 8 bolt. If we scrap it, it's no big deal. But, you know, if we are successful, we could potentially use it. Mm, excuse me. So that's what we're going to be making it out of. Let's go over to the lathe and get started. Alright, so I've got my bolt in the lathe and I've just roughly laid it out with some dicum. Now, the first thing we're going to do is turn this thread major thread diameter down on the back. Then I'm going to come in, and instead of turning the taper, I'm going to turn it all to one diameter, slightly larger than the large side of this taper. That way I'll have something good to grip on when I flip this in the chuck. I'm going to skip this feature here, come in, turn our 9 16 diameter down for our thread on the front. I'll come in, do a scratch pass on my thread, remove the tailstock back, run a dive on it to finish the thread and then come part this thing off and I can flip it and I can work our front feature all of our little uh, uh, taper and stuff I can work all that with the compound in the lathe then we'll take it over to the cutter grinder and hopefully set up and grind this taper but uh, <laughs> like I said all this is subject to change we're going to be running coolant we don't want this part growing and pushing our tailstock back so Let's get started on this little feature, and hopefully this thing turns out good. these two diameters done and now I need to come in and work right after this nut. So I'm going to have to plunge in and then work my way across and to do that I'm using a 364 radius little carbide insert here. I'm just changing it out from my uh, threading insert here. Change it out 
and this having a little radius on the end will allow me to plunge in and move across, you know, just a little, but that's all I need because there's not a lot to be removed here. So that's what we're going to do. So I got a mag base here with an indicator. And, you know, we're just working our front here. This is just so I don't have a carriage stop for the back of this bed. So in order to get a repeatable move back, I have to use a test indicator. So I'm just bringing it back after I made my cut. Bring it back to my zero. Plunge in and make another cut. this feature so it runs true. So we can indicate it off of it if we have to. <laughs> this one will take off just enough to clean it up. It's already slightly small but it doesn't really matter. It's not critical. For that part. All right, so all of our features basically are done, just roughly anyway. And now I'm going to come in. I got my compound set up at 29 and a half degrees, so I can come in at an angle just to reduce pressure. Not that it really matters too much. We got a tailstock there, but and rough our thread out 90%, and then I'll run a die over it to finish it out. So I'm going to do away with this little radius insert and put in our threading insert and and both of these insert both sides of this insert are chipped I guess I'll just grab a new $15 insert and uh, cut this with it no I'm not let's go over to the cutter grinder and grind this thing back to where we can use it all right, so to grind this insert, I just put the you know, of course, the holder holds the insert well, so I just put it in my uni universal vise here. I've got a brand new grinding wheel here, diamond. This is a four inch by eighth inch, and a brand new hub and a brand new nut, both of which have never been run before. And uh, you know, I know that the radial and the um, lateral run out on this hub but all my hubs are within a few tenths so we're going to check the run out on this wheel and see how well it runs it's a shars wheel and i think it's a hundred grit it's a d1 a1 wheel so i've got a old Mitutoyo thousandths test indicator and the, the end sorry eat up on it so it doesn't make any difference it's actually the tip or the ball is broken off of it so it won't give us a actual reading but it'll be really close and I'm gonna rotate this thing and see what kind of run out we get on this all right let's see what we get
Not that great. I'd say six thousandths run out, at least. It is what it is, so I don't know how good of a finish this will give us, but we're going to try it anyway, just for fun. See what it does. I mean, unless you dress this wheel, this is what you have. What I've heard, the wheel, a diamond wheel that's out around will actually cut more aggressive, or not out around, but you know, not true, will cut more aggressive than one that uh, is true. I've heard Alfred Lyons say that, and, and that's all he does is grind to him. Good. I'm going to do the other side and we'll be good and we'll look at it. Right, well, there it is after grinding. That's about as good a picture as I can get of it. The finish is not quite as good as the factory finish with that wheel. You can actually hear that wheel running out a little bit. But this will work even if it lasted half as long. And still didn't take five minutes to grind that. Then we ground the same off each side, so I can just raise my tool holder that amount, and I'll be right back on center. And flip it. If I had dull end, and I'll still be there. So that's good. Well, it's been one of those weeks again. You know, where uh, <laughs> there's a hundred different jobs to do, and this week was changing out the sink. And uh, there was really nothing wrong with this sink. It was just shallow, and my wife hated it. We ended up getting a uh, second-hand sink from my aunt who upgraded, but uh, the old one she took out was a deeper version than what we had. So I just swapped them out, but you know it's never that easy. There was five different leaks from the old junky uh, piping that was under the sink, and we made two trips to Lowe's, and you know how it goes. But we got it working, it and uh, she's happy, and so am I. Yeah. It's way more corn than I thought two rows in it. Yeah, that's a big bag. to my brother and then uh, I think my 
my mom and dad are going to take the other. There was five rows down here total, so that's about it, at least for the corn anyway. All right, a little quick demonstration for, you know, the beginner guys. Um, the experienced guys already know this. They've been doing this for years, but the reason why you set your compound up at an angle is to reduce cutting pressure. Imagine this fishtail gauge is this part and we're going to cut it. If I feed straight in with my cross slide, well this insert is going to be cut on both sides and it's the deeper I feed in the more tool pressure I'm going to create. But with the compound set up at an angle, it's going to only be cutting on you know the front leading edge this little front leading edge here as I feed in you know just reduces tool pressure that's the thing um, I think Mr. Pete done a pretty detailed video on uh, setting your compound up and cutting a thread like this um, it does present some problems because you're at an angle you can't trust your dials on your compound as, how, uh, as to how much you're feeding in and there's ways ar around uh, you know the calculations also you can set up a test indicator on your uh, tool post to get a direct reading uh, I think uh, Keith Fenner does that so there's a lot of ways I'm not going to go into the into the to the details but just a quick little demonstration as to to why people do it this way it is a 3 8 24. So, 24. So that's it. 3 8 24. One, position one. Last row. Good to go. <laughs> So that looks pretty good. And I'm happy with that. And I'm just going to pull this out of the chuck and take it to the saw and just cut it by hand. Alright guys, you know I'm always looking for cabinets or storage and stuff like that. And most of my stuff is just scavenged. And uh, some of you guys may remember I had a little table here. And uh, with two drawers in the bottom, just uh, really limited as far as what it would hold. But I walked by a dumpster at work the other day, and this was in the dumpster, with the key still in the lock. So, it had one dent in it here, and it only has that because they threw it in the dumpster, so I had to knock it out. But it's not that bad. You, know, you, think, you, know, you can't really even see it unless you look for it. So, this is awesome. It's the deep version. It's like these drawers are <laughs> you know, like three feet deep, so it'll hold a lot. I'm going to be putting all my cutter grinder stuff in here. I've already got some in here. This being, you know, it's, it's narrower than the cabinet that was here and quite a bit taller, but it's real deep. So it'll hold 10 times what that other little cabinet uh, held and then really, you know, less floor space. So, you know, stuff like this, 
It's awesome, especially when it's free. Man, it's like 112 degrees. Not really, but it feels like it. In the shop today, it's humid. Now, I've run into a problem, and I don't think probably most people wouldn't show you this. They just go on and, you know, fix it off camera and, you know, do their thing. But I really, I want you to see this because I think it's kind of interesting what I run into. It's my fault, but, uh, you know, it is what it is, and I want to show it to you. Now, what we did originally, held this in the fore jaw. I put a center in here and supported it with the tailstock, and then we worked all these features. What I failed to do is double check my tailstock for alignment. Now, I aligned it not long ago, and I guess I've bumped it or something since then, or it just moved. And what I ended up with is two thousandths taper between basically the start of this thread and uh, here, where I've measured it anyway, two thousandths. Well, right now all this is is work holding. I mean, it's not that big a deal. We still got lots of excess material here. But my problem is that my four jaw chuck is too large to hold this part by itself. The jaws run into each other when you close them. So I was holding it in a collet chuck, or in a yeah, in a collet block in the fore jaw, and dialing it in, ready to bring you back, and we was going to work this front feature. Well, I couldn't get it to dial in. For some reason, I was getting erratic readings, and I could push on this just a little, and and I would you know it throw me off a half thousandth here or there, and that was driving me nuts. I couldn't figure out why. So I pulled it out and I checked it and then I found that I had a taper in this part and collets don't hold tapers very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the cutter grinder. I've already dialed it in, checked it, ground apart, made sure that it's grinding true. And I'm going to grind this portion down to 1730 seconds, which is still about six or seven thousandths above the largest diameter on the taper that I need to grind. So I'm still good. I can hold it in a 1730 seconds call it in this block in the lathe. So I'm going to get set up on the cutter grinder. We'll grind this and then we'll go work our front feature. But I want to show you a couple parts that I did. Just practice parts first. All right, so here's a little test piece that I made off camera. I was just working this front end or socket for our call it. And I didn't cut the thread. I mean, I'm confident that I can, you know, do a thread fine. But this socket is a little bit, uh, you know, intricate. It's got uh, two different IDs on the bore, the in internal bore. And then it's got, uh, you know, the 15 degree taper here. So I set it up in the uh, in the lathe and I made it just to, to try. And also cylindrically ground on this bolt to make sure I could get a satisfactory finish before I even started. So pretty good finish. Not uh, perfect. This stuff seems a little soft. I don't know a lot about grinding, but uh, you know, I just sparked out really good on it and got a finish that I can live with. So there it is without the thread. That's what we're going to be making after we grind this part. slow, but I can get a much better finish, of course, on the grinder than I can on the lathe. Grade 8 bolts are made to be strong, uh, not necessarily made to machine well.
well, there it is. I ground this surface here and this surface, as you've seen. It turned out pretty good. Uh, a little soft, I think, for grinding, but uh, I'm happy with it. It's only like the third piece I've ever you know, ground. Uh, the major thing is that now it doesn't uh, wobble at all in this collet, so I can hold it in the fore jaw, and uh, when I indicate it in, it should stay uh, without, uh, you know, moving around. So I'm going to go get this set up, and we'll work our front feature. boring this out with is just a really small carbide bar that I made. It's really uh, too thin for its length, but it's good for stuff like this when you're only taking a you know, couple thousandths at a time max. It actually works pretty good. Not for heavy cuts at all. It would break in a heartbeat. It's a good thing about carbide. It's rigid. guys I am officially out of time this week so we're gonna have to pick this up next week I still gotta cut my thread 5 8 18 or 9 16 18 uh, thread for my nut to tighten down on my little collet and uh, I still got to and it fits in there just enough I still gotta cut my flats on this where you put a wrench on it to tighten it into the spindle on the grinder and I have to grind the taper. I've never ground a taper before so that should be pretty interesting. And I've only cylindrically ground probably four or five things in my life so I'm no expert on any of these machines to be honest. But It should turn out as long as I'm careful it should be fine. It'll be a good test piece anyway. So let me bring in and show you where we're at so far. Then I've got some pretty neat viewer mail, some amazing viewer mail, actually, um, on the bench that I want to share with you. Well, here it is, a little closer look. You know, we still got, uh, well, that fits in there just, just the way it should. The back of that collet has to, you know, stay in line also, so it uh, has a little uh, bore in there that uh, keeps it straight. So we got just enough room, our collet sticks above the surface, just like on the original, enough to where when we tighten the nut, it squeezes the little collet and tightens around. We still got to cut our thread, like I said, cut our flats and do our taper, and then this should be done. I'm just going to use the nut off of the uh, original, I don't, you know, why not, it's already a good part that's made. So let's go over to the bench, I want to show you, man it is in there. I want to show you that viewer mail that I got because it is awesome. Get out of there. Must have a little burr in there or something. Alright 
guys. I got some awesome viewer mail, like I said, this week. Uh, Lloyd LeDuc from Hubertus, Wisconsin. He wrote me a really nice letter and sent me some diamond wheels. Sent me seven inch and a quarter bore and then a little pegboard here with some smaller diamond wheels on it. And uh, they range from, you know, radius to angled, plated to resin bonded, you know, aluminum body and steel body. So it's a pretty uh, large selection of wheels that uh, you know, should come in handy for sure. Um, not easy to come by or cheap. So I really appreciate it, Lloyd. He said he enjoys watching the channel, and I enjoy him watching. So thank you. I really appreciate it. I got a neat little machinist, or not a machinist level, a, um, I believe an engine assembly level. At least that's what I was told. A crank pin level. It's German made, hand scraped on the bottom, and, uh, you know, really small and compact. But it looks like it's got some age to it, and it is definitely neat. That was sent to me by Flathead Ron from Flathead Ron's Garage. He's got a YouTube channel that, uh, that's where I seen the level first. Uh, I had commented on it because he had got it in a lot of tools that he bought. I said, man, that is a neat little level and uh, ended up getting it in the mail. So thank you, Ron. I, I appreciate that. That was an unexpected welcome gift for sure. And I got one more thing here. I got some stickers from Brad Jacobs from the Basement Shop Guy. That says YouTube channel, so go check him out. He wanted me to put uh, his stickers on the board and that's what I'm gonna do. So thank you guys, and I definitely appreciate the gifts. All right, guys, that's it for this week. I am definitely going to have to cut it here. I am out of time completely. I'd have to say I'm pretty happy with the way that piece has turned out so far. I'm glad I'm doing a test piece because I did run into several issues. The unexpected taper that I turned on here, and then one that I didn't show where I had some clearance issues with my... Uh, threading tool I had to grind uh, the shank on it in order to get up next to that uh, live center to cut that 3 8 24 thread so several issues I got some you know cylindrical grinding experience on my cutter grinder just a little but you got to start somewhere and uh, I really need to get a heat treat of it I think that would uh, expand the capabilities of the shop you know I can work with hardened materials where I have the grinder now so I'm looking for one of those. I think it uh, shouldn't be too hard to find, and I don't need a big one. So, next on the list, I think, uh, you know, small item anyway. So, big thanks to all my subscribers, old and new, all my viewers, and definitely my patrons. You know, appreciate you guys. And if you haven't, make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on my little guy up here and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.